Well, welcome back to the channel. As the title suggests, we're making a pulley rig in this video. I'm going to be making it with a new Dynaform from Tried and Tackle. Um, I have done a pulley rig video before. This is different. That's the new Dynaform. As you can see, it's changed. It's different. The Aero pulley, which was the original, used to go through inside here as a figure of eight. This doesn't. This is more traditional. I'll show you a few little features as the video goes on. But you can do two rigs in one with this. I'll explain as we make the rig and I'll show you the rig and show you what I'm talking about. As this is a pulley rig video, so generally you'll be using it on rough ground, generally. I'm going to show you how to set up a rotten bottom. This is for people who've never seen a rotten bottom or don't know how to set one up. So this rig will be the full rig that you'll be using on the day. So I'm going to show you how to make the rig and I'm going to show you the way the rig works. And I'm also going to show you how to set up a rotten bottom. I'm going to stop waffling and get into the video. I'm going to show you the components that you need to make one single rig and we'll go from there. Well as you can see here this is all the components you'll need to make the actual rig. Um, bottom left we've got the Dynaform, then we've got two Thermalinks in the centre, then we've got the Roto bait clip on the right which is red. We've got two power swivels which are a size 8, then we've got two 6mm black beads. Top left that's a 4.0 Kaiki wide mouth specimen and on the top right we've got a 4.0 semi-circle kikey hook so what we'll do now is get all these components put together on some line and show you how to make it well we're going to making the rig now the main rig body is 80 pound mono um, i personally use kikey eye cast i'll show you the spool now it's 80 pound mono and the diameter is 0 0.85 millimeters you can get these on ebay that's where i normally get them from it's extremely good line and it's pretty cheap as well what I've got here is a short length of 80 pound mono. This is only for demonstration purposes. Generally, my pulley rigs are around five feet long. So what you'd want to do is get this line and I'd stretch it out a full arm span. That would be the length of the rig body. But for the video, I'm doing it a lot shorter, as you can see. So what we're going to do first, get one end, get one end of the line and tie on a thermalink. That's a thermalink right there, just a clip. So we're going to go through, come back about that far and go round that line with this tag six times. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. You get the tag end and if you look, there's a tiny little hole there, look. Right there, go back through that, hold the tag end, give it a pull and it'll straighten out. When you get to this stage, what you want to do is give it a wet with your mouth. The reason why, if you do not wet this, when you pull the knot down, the nylon heats up and it will weaken the line. Then it can cause damage to the line and cause a weak point. So now we've done that, what I'm going to do is pull it down. What I'm going to do is just clip it onto a lead, just so I've got something to grip hold of to pull it down with. As you'll see with this kikey line, the knot's pulled down amazing. So I've clipped onto the lead, I'll pull slowly. There's no need to rip these knots down, take your time. As you can see, pull gently like that. You give it a good tug at the end. That is a seriously neat knot. The line, if you, if you look, if I let it hang, is not kinked. It's not damaged the line. It's a perfect knot right there. What we'll do is cut this tag end off. I cut my tag ends off pretty close. As you can see, you can't really get much closer right there. So that's one on and done. So we've got the thermalink there. Next, what we want to put on is a bead. That is a 6mm bead, we just thread it on and drop it down. Next, you want to put the Dynaform on. That's the Dynaform. It's got a little stainless steel insert inside it. There's one hole in this. As you'll see, the line will pass through that hole right there. Just like that. As you can see, it sits on the line now. We're going to let that drop down. I'll show you the components once they're all on. So next, we want another bead. So we put another 6mm bead on, just like that. And the last component for the rig body is another Thermalink, one of those. So we're going to throw that on, tie it on, same knot, round six times, back through itself. And that's the main rig body complete, believe it or not, it's that simple. We've got two Thermalinks on the end, we've got two beads and the Dynaform right there. 
What we'll have now, this side will be for the lead, this side will be for the snood. The snood is the length of line down to the hooks. I'm going to be tying that up now and showing you. The snood line, or the hook length, some people call it different names. I use £60, as you can see right there. The same again, it's Kaiki Eye Cast. What you want to do, pull a bit off the spool, don't cut it yet. You've got your end there, and tie on a power swivel. These are size 8 power swivels. They come in a little yellow packet off eBay. They're not cheap, but they are extremely good quality. Um, you can see the size of that swivel there. It's absolutely tiny, and that's got a £195 braking strain. So, same knot as earlier, round six times, and back through its own little loop. What you want to do then, before you pull the knot down, because it makes it easier, clip it onto the thermolink, just like that. I've already pre-wet this knot, pull it down gently, there's no need to rush it down. Just there, look at that. It's a very, very neat knot, it's a brilliant line this is. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I pay for it all myself. It's just, if it's good, I'll recommend it. The reason why I said not to cut the line off the spool, this line is still attached to the spool. Doing it this way, you don't waste any line. So as you can see, we've got the thermolink and the swivel. So that's the main line there, that's the hook length there. What you want to do is get the dynaform and bring it up to the top, next to here like that. Put tension down on the main rig body and also the hook length. Pull them down together, just like that. Making sure that bead at the top is stopped next to the dynaform. You don't want this out, you want it like that. Now I've pulled it down, as you can see there. I can let go of this side. I'm going to pinch it there. What you want to do is cut the line halfway down the thermolink roughly. Say, about there. This is actually the rig complete without hooks. That is all you need. What I'm going to do is put two hooks on the snood line. With shore fishing, I generally use two hooks. It's called a panel. So the first one is the circle hook right there, which is an offset. It's a 4 row Kaiki semicircle hook. I'm going to thread that on the line. Don't tie it on. Let it hang up there and just let it go. Just like that. The next hook is a Kaiki 4 row wide mouth specimen. I'm going to tie this one on. Same knot again, round six times. Now the rig's complete. Um, we've clipped the lead on. We've got two beads and the dynaform. We've got the thermolink, a swivel, and our snood with our two hooks on. So you get down to the beach, you've threaded the line through all the eyes on your rod. On the end then, you've got a shock leader, which is hanging here off the rod. I'm going to get the dynaform, and we're going to clip it on to a thermolink. That's the rig now on the main line. So you'll put your bait on your hooks. There is videos on the channel. Um, I will try and link them up here, baiting up videos. So, so you've got your bait on there. You can get him ready to cast it out. As you can see, your hook is sitting up here, right there. What you want to do is pull, and this works on a pulley system, hence the name, as you can see. The lead heads up all the way. I'll explain in a moment why you need that. But drop it back down. What you want to do is pull it, put it in the slot in the roto clip and close it, just like that. And as you can see, that is clipped in to the roto clip. This is for casting. The reason why it keeps it streamlined, it stops your bait from flapping around everywhere in the cast. So that's that. When it hits the water, the water hits this paddle right here and releases it, just like that. The bonus with these clips, compared to others that I've used, it's easy to clip in, just like that, done. Um, some I won't name clips, I ain't going to name and shame. They're all good clips, but they have the downfalls. What I like about this more than anything else with the others, you can bounce it. As you can see, it doesn't come out. Um, some of the other clips on the market, you could clip it all in on your rod rest, start walking down to cast, your rod tip's dipping and bouncing a bit with the weight of the lead, the weight of the bait. It'll bounce a bit and it'll pop off. So you've got to walk back up to your rod rest, you've got to clip it all back in and go back down again, trying to keep that rod steady. Well, this one, it doesn't come out. You can see it's still fixed in there nice because of the way it's been designed. It hits the water and they release every time. I've personally never had one of these fail to release. 
So you've got your rig there, you've cast you cast out now, as it lands in the water, it hits the paddle and it releases just like that. The reason for the pulley system, some of you may be wondering, some of you may already know. You're fishing over rocks, rough ground, where this can easily get stuck in the bottom. So a fish comes along, grabs your bait on the bottom, you strike, as you strike, the weight of the fish on the hook pulls your lead up. Remember, this is the main line. So you're playing the fish over here somewhere at this angle. That line is going back to your rod. This lead is now up totally away from the bottom. There's no chance of it being snagged because the fish is here and the lead's pulled itself up here. Now, another option that you have if you're on seriously, seriously rough ground. Let's just say you cast out, you leave it out there 20 minutes, half an hour. You do not get a bite. You need to come in for a bait change. On seriously rough ground, this is going to get stuck. So you've got a chance then of losing all your shock leader, your rig, everything. So there's something you can use called a rotten bottom. I'm going to show you how to set this up now. The rotten bottom I like is this one. Looks a bit confusing. You've got a bead there and you've got like a gate which opens there. So what we'll do, we'll get this onto the rig and I'll show you how it works. You've got the rotten bottom there. It needs to go this way around. The reason why, this gate opens and drops that way. So you need it to be up that way. The roto clip we clipped onto the lead earlier now needs to go through the eye on there just like that we're going to close it we're going to clip that back onto the thermalink so now it looks something like that now it's clipped on like that what you need to do is tie a length of line from the bottom loop here what i'm using is some 18 pound mono the reason why i use 18 pound personally some may use 15 or 12 if it's not snagged really bad, you'll bring your lead back with 18 pound mono. If it is snagged bad, the 18 pound mono is gonna snap before your rig or your shock leader. You've got the main shaft here of the rotten bottom link. So what I'm gonna do, tie this 18 pound line through that bottom loop. Same knot again, just go around it six times. What you wanna do now is tie your lead onto that line. The rotten bottom's now tied on. As you can see there, we've got the roto clip, the rotten bottom, length of line to the lead. What I'm going to do is clip it back up now onto our pretend rod and line and I'm going to show you how to set it up. So what we've got now, we've clipped up to the rod, you've got this system here, just like that. What you want to do is get your lead, bring it up, bring your lead up onto this gate, just like this. Then close the gate and drop the bead over it, just like that. So as you can see, we've got a little loop of line, we've got the bead and the gate shut. Now what you do, get your hooks, put it back into the roto clip like we did earlier, just like that. And there's your system set up. Two things happen now when this hits the water. As it hits the water, one thing that happens, this bead gets lifted by the water pressure and so does this paddle. So as it hits the water, the bead lifts, your lead will drop off that clip onto that weak link of line right there. And also that comes off. So what you're left with fishing is this, just like that. Now it's all free and fishing, you've had that bite, you start lifting and it's stuck but you can feel the fish there thumping a little bit and you know there's a fish there. What you want to do, wind down a little bit more and apply steady pressure. You're trying to get this weak link to break because there's a high chance this lead snagged up. So what you're going to do is keep pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling. It's 18 pound line so it takes a little bit to break, but give it a good pull. As you can see, that lead has just snapped off. But what that's done, that lead is now gone, stuck in the bottom, you're never getting it back. But the important part is, the lead's gone off here now, but your fish is still on that hook and this is now pulled all the way up there with no lead and your fish is still attached to here. There's nothing else to snag up. The hooks are in the fish's mouth and none of this is going to snag on anything. So you've got a free run bringing that fish back in. That's how a rotten bottom works. Yes, you do go through leads and leads are not cheap, but it's a way to save losing fish when you're fishing in seriously rough ground. Um, 
me personally, I wouldn't suggest using anything lighter than 18. If you use 50, if you use 12 or 15 pound line, generally, whether there's a fish there or not, you lose your leads every single time. You don't deliberately want to be littering the sea with anything. That's not it's not it's not a good way to go about fishing. So this is 18 pound. You could even step it up to 20. So generally, when you reel this in without a fish, you do get your lead back if it's not snagged bad. If it's snagged bad, you do lose it. But you're better off losing the lead than losing the whole entire lot. So what I'm going to do now is show you the other variant of the rig. I'm not changing anything. The rig is still the same rig. So what I'm going to do is unclip it from the rod, the main line up here. Then, we've taken the lead off the roto clip. The lead was attached to the bottom of the roto clip there, if you remember. Now what we're going to do is clip this onto the rod. Just like that. So the rig now looks like it's upside down, but it's not. There's a reason for this. If you remember, we've got the, the Dynaform there, which slides. What I'm going to do is actually clip the lead onto this now. Some of you may see where this is going. It's actually really clever. The lead is now clipped onto there. And as you can see, it's free running look. So, some of you may have guessed it, you've got a running ledger. So this is two rigs in one. I'll show you from here. You've got your main line coming down, and then you've got your running ledger system here. I've not changed anything on the rig. Now I had to cut it, now I had to do anything. All I've done is unclip the dynaform from the top and basically put the rig upside down. The next bonus is with this, you've got a running ledger, but what you can do, bring your hook back up to the top. And you've got the roto clip right there. Put your hook in the roto clip and close it. Now you've got a clipped up running ledger rig as you can see right there. So you can cast that out, it'll hit the water and it releases and then you're back to having a running ledger. I love that system to be honest because a lot of the places I fish are rough ground. Usually I make up pulley rigs and I make up running ledger rigs. The pulley rigs are used for my general rough ground fishing fishing for cod, fishing for spur dogs, fishing for bull huss, stuff like that. Then I like to use a running ledger with conger. With this rig being two in one, I can just swap it around the way I want to clip it on. I don't have to have two rig wallets with two separate rigs. I've only got pulley rigs, so which are also running ledgers. So that design from Trident Tackle of this little piece is seriously, seriously clever. Right then, features. Well, I'm going to show you another thing I like about the Dynaform. This was the same with the Aero Pulley. They've also incorporated it into the Dynaform. You can see your line runs through there and it's super free. Absolutely no resistance whatsoever. So let's just say you're bringing a fish in and that line's pulled down tight. You can see now that line's gone. It's inside the groove. So if you're pulling this through rocks or anything abrasive, the line is protected inside there. It's only a small thing, but I think it's a very clever design. Right there, look. So that's it. That's how simple it is to make a pulley rig. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this rig is super short. It's purely for the video. Normally my pulley rigs are set up to around four to five feet long. So there we go. That's how you make a pulley rig, which is also a running ledger rig with the Dynaform from Trident Tackle. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you found the video useful, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.